All right, I can't believe that I need to make an episode explaining how currency exchange works, but I got called out as a liar on the threads. And I'm going to explain a little bit about how this works because uh, it doesn't warrant a response, but I feel like I need to. Okay. So first of all, this comment uh, was watching one of my videos, the commenter was watching one of the videos and saw that we said that it is 37 Cordoba to the US dollar. And that means that for every dollar you have, you can go to the bank and, and it is worth 37 Cordobas. Like this is pretty straightforward. This is how much a dollar is worth. 37 Cordobas is worth a dollar. It's the exchange rate. You would think that that would be straightforward and the whole world would understand how exchange rates work because it's such a common thing. It's part of everyday life, especially you live in a place like Nicaragua, everyone deals with it. Just common sense society, everybody knows the exchange rate, right? Anybody in Nicaragua knows it's 37 to 1. If you don't know it's 37 to 1, you definitely are not in Nicaragua because it's on every receipt. It's sent out by the government in the news. It's listed everywhere. Everyone talks about it. It's a number you have to know because we are a dual currency country. And so you use both these things. If you don't know that number, everyone's going to be ripping you off left and right like you're a crazy person. So that's the first thing. Here in Nicaragua, exchange rates and moving currency back and forth between Cordobas and dollars is just part of everyday life. So if you're going to be living in Nicaragua, make sure you understand this stuff. Not that any of you don't. I can't imagine anybody doesn't actually understand this. But just in case, we're going to cover some of the basics. So it means that this amount of money meets this amount of stuff. You could think of this in other terms, such as how much gold is worth in US dollars. It means that that's interchangeable. If you had a friend who had X amount of gold and you had this amount of US dollars, you could swap and one didn't rip the other one off. That's how much it's it's just worth. If you have a friend who has 37 Cordobas and you have $1, you can just exchange them back and forth. You can do it all day long and no one's ever changing value. They're changing how it's represented, but the value doesn't change. You both have the same amount of money all the time. That is the basics of exchange. Now, if you go out on the street and you ask someone to exchange money for you, a professional who is a money changer, and if you're going to be changing money, because we did get this question, I'm going to add this to a big Q&A that we do in the future, but if you're going out and getting money changed anywhere that's a business, not a business that's like a restaurant, restaurants here will charge you 37 to 1. So will hotels and everything else because they're not in the business of making money or doing exchanges for you. They're simply accepting either type of currency. That's not the, exactly the same as doing an exchange. They literally are, are literally are offering that you could pay 370 Cordova or $10, your choice, whatever you like. Mix and match doesn't matter because they're equal. 37 to 1, everyone knows what it is. And this number is set by the government. Now, now, some people will mention that there is a tiny fluctuation from time to time. If you look at something like XE.com, there's a tiny percentage of fluctuation. And this is not the exchange rate in Nicaragua. That is the exchange rate on the global market. And that exchange rate changes just the tiniest bit based on demand for either dollars or Cordoba on the open market and individuals or individual banks that are looking to onload or offload a little bit of certain types of currencies and are sometimes willing to pay a premium in order to get something that they need for a transaction. It's a little bit different. That is a floating currency on the world market. But if you come to Nicaragua, it is rock solid at 37 to 1 until the government sets a new rate because the government actually sets the rate here. It's a legal rate that is set by the government and they publish it. There's no question about it. Okay. If you go to someone whose job it is to exchange the money, not a restaurant that's just allowing payment in either one, they have to get paid. So when you go to do an exchange, they have two options. They can either charge you, okay, that'll cost you $1 and then I'll do your exchange, or they just take a percentage off the top. Well, the easiest thing is to take a percentage off the top. That way, if you just have to change $1, you're losing a penny or two. And if you have to change a ton, well, you're paying more. It's the equitable thing to do. So that's what they do. And in the way that they do it is by having an exchange rate that is different in each direction and no exchange rate matches the actual exchange rate. So it doesn't matter what a Cordoba is worth in dollars. It'll be worth a little bit less if you're going one direction with a money changer and a little bit more if you're going the other way with the money changer, because in both cases, the money changer is always going to keep a small amount of the total amount of money for themselves to pay for the job that they're doing. And that's the only thing that makes sense. People can't actually expect them to be working for free. That would be absurd. How would they pay to stand on the street holding large amounts of money that could be stolen from them and uh, doing the exchange and knowing what to do and having a calculator and going to work every day and traveling and doing all those things if they weren't making some money. This is their job. And the only job they have is changing money. So they have to make money while changing money. They have to charge you for it. 
And since they're not charging you a flat rate, they're charging you a percentage and they do it by modifying the exchange rate. So how it works and how it looks is like this. If you give them $1, they're not gonna give you 37 Cordobas. They're gonna give you 36.3 Cordobas as an example. It's a very small percentage, but it's more than 1% most of the time. Now they can't actually do that if you're only doing $1. If you do a single dollar transaction, they'll probably just give you 36. But if you're doing a big transaction, right? Thousands of, of dollars, then they're going to round to that number. So let's say you give them $1,000. If, if they weren't making a penny, they'd give you 37,000 Cordoba. Easy peasy. But instead, they'll give you probably 36,300 Cordoba. You're paying $700 on, or, I'm sorry, 700 Cordoba, which is less than $20, on a $1,000 transaction in order for them to make enough money uh, to pay for doing the job they just did for you. And if you're going to do the opposite, you have to give them slightly more. Instead of giving them 36.3 Cordobas to do that, or even giving them 37 Cordobas to get a dollar, you've got to give them something like 37.7 or 37.8 Cordobas uh, per dollar that, that you're going to get. So in both cases, you're paying a little bit extra. And the easy way to think of this is if you have a friend and you're just trading back and forth, you should both have equal money all the time. You're trading. But when you're going to a business that does money exchange, you have to pay for that exchange. So if you exchange dollars to Cordoba and then take the same money and exchange it back to dollars and then take it, big, you will eventually, your money will get smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually it goes away. You will lose your money in transactions. So it's one of the reasons why we say don't do a lot of transactions because uh, if you're paying for them, you're going to lose money, right? You don't change money back and forth. That's why all the businesses accept either so that no one has to do that under normal circumstances. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So the general rule is if for some reason you absolutely have to exchange currency, you go to the street vendors who stand on the, they're generally in front of banks. They wave dollars around. You just walk up to them, tell them what you need, give them the money. They'll switch it. They do it in their head and hand it to you and you're on your way. They're going to give you the best rate in the country. That's the official way to do it. That's what the government expects you to do if you need to exchange money. But there is almost no situation where you're going to need to exchange money. If you run a business here, maybe. If you're living here long term to heading towards residency, it's possible that you're going to need to do that at some point. I have been here for three years and one time I needed to make a deposit for someone into a bank account that only accepted U.S. dollars and I didn't have U.S. dollars because I don't normally. All I had is Cordoba. It's the only thing I work in. I wasn't going to go to the ATM and take out $50 just for that. Uh, I don't use dollars like Ever. I can go a year literally without seeing a dollar. So in that particular case, it just wasn't worth doing anything else. I went to a money exchanger with whatever 37 is times 50, probably 1,850 Cordobas and, and minus however, whatever, a little bit extra I had to pay him. So it's probably about 1,900 Cordobas that I paid him and he gave me $50 and I went to the bank and did the, 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 the deposit. That's a special case. One time in three years. So that's a guide. Could you have to do it more? Of course, but once or twice a year would be a lot. The idea that you're actually going to exchange money basically should be like, wait, why would I exchange money? There's got to be a better way. And the one thing that could make it happen, if you're a tourist, you're coming in, you have a lot of US dollars, you want to get court above, but for some reason you brought your money in as cash, Generally, you don't want to do that, but maybe it just happened. Maybe there's some special extenuating circumstances, okay, and you want to have more flexible. You don't want to show up as a tourist as much. You want to be able to do really small transactions that will sometimes be under a dollar. You don't want to be like Tony Travels the other day who had to pay $2 for something that should have been a dollar eight, which is a huge markup, all because he was working in U.S. currency instead of Cordoba. Okay. There's exceptions, but in general, it should be an extremely rare circumstance that you're going to exchange money when you do. It's the guy standing out in front of the bank. So that is how exchange works. It is very straightforward. And I do want to point out in this crazy thing where this guy called me a liar, and thank you for the people who jumped in are like, um, we live here. It's absolutely 37 to one. Everybody knows this. How could you possibly think it's not? Um, Cause he thought it was 36.3. And if that was the case, He's missing that he can only go one direction with that. If he went the other direction, they would charge him something completely different. If not, he could just go to any bank. He could go to the government and exchange all that money and be making money like crazy. That's how arbitrage works. But obviously that's not happening. If anybody was giving us bi-directional 36.3, um, I would just show up there and be there all day. I would just go to them, turn all my money into US dollars. I would then run to the bank and get my 37 to one, take it all back out and just go back and forth all day long. I'd be making millions within a week or two, all both doing nothing, just running back and forth between a guy who doesn't know how to price his, his exchange and the bank that follows the rules. Like <laughs> very, very simple to see that logically the thing that he said could not possibly be true. But it's funny because he decided to back it up by, if you read his questions over time, 
He has said so many things that imply he knows nothing about traveling to Central America, knows nothing about the world, has definitely never been here. And he, he asks all these questions. And then he calls me out as a liar on something so obvious. Clearly, he's never been to Nicaragua or he would know. And the way he defended it was by claiming to be a human trafficker and claiming that the criminals involved in human trafficking that he works with use a different exchange rate. You can't make this stuff up. This is the kind of stuff that weird comments, when you start lying in general, like this is the I love Lucy effect, right? Once you start lying about common things, and you decide to start an argument, you wanna be an internet troll, and you start lying, it's often hard to realize just how foolish your lie is going to be or what that lie implies. And so that he like claimed to be working with human trafficking, like he's like serious criminal. If someone could track his IP address, that post on that thread, I mean, that could get him thrown in jail. Legitimately, like hardcore. Human trafficking is a major crime to be claiming you're involved in on a, on a public forum and then claiming you're in the country somewhere. Either he's the dumbest criminal you've ever ever seen or he's never actually been to Nicaragua and doesn't fear getting arrested because they can't track him because he's not actually here. In either case, the exchange rate is 37 to 1. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. See you all tomorrow.